We're going to continue our innovation theme on CNBC Africa now and apply innovation to education. I think some of the scourges of the South African economy and South African society are, of course, unemployment, there's crime, there's low growth. But our education system is really, well, it needs a, a bit of an upgrade. And so innovation is, is, of course, in the future going to play, hopefully, a major role in that. In the studio with me from Edge Campus in Cape Town is Gareth Hoyer. Now, Gareth, before we get into innovation, tell us about Edge Campus, first of all. Edge Campus is a, an education software company uh, started in 2010 by myself and co-founder Paul Kim. So our main aim at Edge Campus is to create software and apply it to the education landscape in South Africa. Okay, now you focus particularly on public schools. Now that, of course, is terribly important. Mm. Um, public schools, do they have different needs to, to, to the, the private sector or, or, or not? Or, apart from the fact that they probably have less resources. Yes, so that's the main thing we've noticed. We've spent a, a lot of time over the past year just researching um, the school sector and we saw that infrastructure is the one thing and resources, as you say, a lot lacking um, in the in the poorer schools and in the, in the communities. Um, but the one thing we've realized that everyone does have is a mobile phone. And if you don't have a mobile phone, at least you'll have access to it. And so we've tried to leverage the mobile technology, particularly to try to create a product that can speak not only to the top tier of schools, but actually across the range to everyone. Okay, I know a private school in, in Cape Town that introduced this thing, a, a laptop, uh, to, to the learners. And a lot of the parents uh, rejected that because they found uh, they, their perception was that it was distracting uh, the learners. Now, you're talking about um, uh, cell phones. Uh, can you give us a practical example of how they work? Yeah, so what we've created initially is a product called Curio, uh, which is focused on the assessment um, aspect of teaching. Our product is, while the learners will benefit from it and they're the end user, um, we're also we're targeting teachers primarily. So what that means is that a teacher has the opportunity to create assessments um, based on the content they've been teaching and then at the end of a lesson, at the end of a week, they create this online or mobile assessment, which they then can distribute through Curio. Now, what that means for the learners um, is that they'll have time either during the classroom or after hours to go and interact with this tool as an engagement or a feedback tool based on the content that the teacher has taught. So um, we've tried it on Mixit for feature phones and um, the social mobile platform and that's worked quite well with some of the um, schools in the Kailicha community. Uh, we just recently finished a project uh, where we worked with a few schools. The brilliant thing about this is, that, of course, that when I get given a new uh, a device, which I occasionally do, I'll spend um, uh, four hours uh, trying to understand the, the the manual that comes with it, mm. and then I'll give up and I'll give it to my son or my daughter, and within five minutes, he or she can tell me exactly how everything that I've tried to make work actually does work. Mm. And of course, children, no matter whether they're private school, public school, or whatever, mm. they understand almost intuitively. So, of course, it's, it must be a, a very uh, exciting tool for the future. Yeah, that's been fantastic. So. The barrier to entry from a technology point of view, our problem actually doesn't sit with the learners, it's more with the teachers. Mm. How can we create a tool that is simple enough for teachers to use and a tool that they actually want to use? Um, what we've come to realize is that software companies that are out there at the moment have uh, tough technology to understand with a high learning curve. They are forced into the schools so the teachers have no option but to learn how to When use you say they are forced into the schools you mean that the government puts out a tender and says right you're going to do this for our school and you're not going to work with the teachers they must just learn they must just uh, take what they're given. Yeah I wouldn't say that the government is necessarily to blame but what we've realized is that certain schools um, have certain decision makers um, let's say either the governing body or the principal. Now this decision maker will be approached by a software company and then they'll be asked would you like to try this tool if you can convince the guy at the top then he'll say yes every classroom must have it and every teacher must use it mm. and so that seems to be the case with with the software that's out there at the moment we've kind of flipped that model and what we've done is we've started meeting with teachers individually finding where the problem lies and what their needs are and then start creating a tool for them that they want to use rather than something that's forced upon so them. So it's like a handmade suit rather than an off the peg suit it's a bespoke service that exactly. you're offering rather than something that's just lumped in and everybody must adapt. Yes precisely so we've gone with the approach of not creating a Swiss army knife which is one tool that can just about do anything but rather to create a toolbox with different tools that allow you to do different things. Mm. That's that's the ideal for us, but we're starting with Curio for now. And how has it been embraced? How have people reacted to this, notably the teachers, because they're the ones that really need mm. to uh, just give it the thumbs up? It's been, it's been great so far, and we've only had a small test group. But during our research, we really came to see that there's a, a lack of time that teachers have, 
That was the one broad problem that all of them wish they had more of. Just time to teach and interact with their learners. They spend so much time doing admin related tasks or other things where they're working with the, with the computers instead of with the kids. So we've been, the teachers have loved what we're trying to do. Um, they see the value that we're trying to add because um, they can use it in a, in a new and dynamic way that they've not previously been able to. So, so the market is, is hungry for it, and now it's just up to us to develop it and get it out there soon. Are you causing a few ripples, a few waves? I mean, are, are people looking at you as upstarts? Uh, you're a startup, but mm. do, they, do people see you as upstarts and they say, no, actually you're treading on a few toes here. Yeah. It's all very nice, uh, but unfortunately it's not, it, not the future for us. Have you uh, uh, encountered hurdles, in other we've words? Ha we've had that experience. Yeah. Ever since we started in May 2010, we've had so much, um, uh, so many barriers, so many hurdles to overcome um, because it is a, a well-run institution, th this education thing, and government is the, a monolith in the, in the industry. And so um, we kind of have to uh, slowly disrupt them. So we're, we're building a groundswell. We're getting our name out there. We've spoken to a lot of education NGOs and other companies. The community is quite small, which is great because they're welcoming us slowly but surely. Um, by far when EDGE campus is at the table when it comes to education, we are no doubt the youngest guys and so some see it as a good thing, others see it as, as not the greatest thing. So yeah, we'll see what we do in the You've future. You've got to make money out of this though, haven't you Gareth? You can't just be in it, in it for the feel good factor. How do Absolutely. you do so? I mean, uh, there's not a lot of funds available in South Africa at the moment with slow growth. It's mm. the sort of thing that we concentrate on on Power Lunch every single day of, of the week. So mm. you can't do it for nothing. Are you making money or do you intend to make money? We're trying to create a model where we can be a for-profit company or profit-sustained company. Um, that in itself is very challenging, as you say, because a lot of the, our competitors or the people in our industry um, rely on grant funding, government funding, other types of funding. Um, we don't want to be that. We want to be a company that provides value to schools and to teachers and something that they'd actually pay for. Um, and so we're hoping to crack that model sometime soon in the new year. You know, I've got two teenage kids and I, I personally feel that those children, despite the fact that they went to good schools, good private schools, I feel that they've been failed by the education system in South Africa. And it's not just in South Africa, it's in England and every other country in the world as well, because mm. everybody uh, learns geography, mathematics, physics, and all the other things, mm. LO even, even these days. But I think that children are, are, are individual little characters and after a while they should be challenged into the area in which they excel mm. for example do you think the sort of thing you're doing at the moment will in the future change the way that children are educated to become more individualistic we're hoping so we're hoping that through our tool um, as schools adopt it and as a learner let's say one of your children enter the schooling program at grade 8 the school already has curio over time what's going to happen is if every class starts using that your child will be able to build a rich profile of where they're excelling, where they're struggling, etc. And hopefully teachers and, and counselors in school, you know, guidance education can drive them in the right direction saying, we've looked at your curio profile. We've seen that you really excel in your languages above all else. Maybe we should push you in that direction mm. more. And there's no doubt that right now in education, what's happening is this whole uh, flipped classroom model where kids are exploring it for themselves and at the end of the day it's quite likely the teachers are going to become facilitators more than the person up front pushing content into your face all the time. Mm. I mean, you're going to create your own map or your own path with regards to where you are as Brilliant, a career. Gareth. We'll leave it there. But thanks very much for your Thank time you and keep much. up the good work. Thank I think you. this is the future. That's Gareth Hoyer from Edge Campus.